Right, Joxy boy, how about some better gameplay today, son? Because my goodness, what a tough start to the season this has been. What is going on, guys? Welcome back. It is episode number 28 of Career Mode, where Ipswich Town have really stumbled out the blocks in season four. Yeah, just two wins in our first eight games in the Premier League, sat in mid table right now. Today, we'll have loads more games in the league. Hopefully, going to get our first win at home in the league this season. Still haven't got one yet. We'll have the Carabao Cup last 16. First, we've gone so far at home to Fulham as well, aiming to reach the last eight of that competition. And in the Champions League. Are Ipswich Town going to get their first one on the board? Because so far from our first three games, played three, zero wins, one draw and two losses including that battering at home to AC Milan. Welcome to prime time Tractor boys. It ain't easy at the top. Right, yeah, loads of games to get through then we're going to crack straight on our first game heading into today's episode. Back to matters in the league but going away from where to be fair, both our wins have come this season. First at Spurs, then at Manchester United and now we take on West Ham. It's been a terrible start. No wins in our last five in all competitions and now aiming to put out here at the capital. West Ham away, our first of multiple today. Go on, it's Wichita. I'm not really sure why I've struggled so much to start this season off. You know, I'd like to blame it on the illness, but that just would not be fair. It's, it's had nothing to do with how I've been feeling. Got to take accountability, just haven't been playing well. Simple as that. Yeah, so now to finds Garn, he's got a bit of space to shoot. Oh, yes, come on. And James Garn gets his first of the season. And the Tractor Boy's in front. Come on, take accountability, Doxy Boy. You've not been on it. Let's kickstart the season. It's a great saying I love, which is... As Adi Yamey belts in the instant response. Not everything will be your fault, but it is your responsibility. You know, it's impacting you. You've got to go out there and put it right. And, you know... I just have not done that yet, so got to take accountability. I could, I could be a bit mad about how a couple of things have gone this season. The lap going down so early, and oh, what a start to this game! Back in front instantly. It's a pendulum out there. You know, the lap's injury. We've had a couple of refereeing decisions that have gone against us as well. Tough, tough bits of bad luck at times, but really, it's just. It's on me. You know, I can't use those excuses. I've just got to play better. It's as simple as that. David Washington, second of the season. Is switched back in front. I can't let this one slip, man. You can't take two separate leads in Premier League games and not see them out. Come on. The Amy trying to get around Victor Christiansen. Steps back inside. There's Cobby. There's Kai. Last year won the player of the season in the Premier League with the 1-2. There's the tackle. And we'll get it away. And that, I think, is probably... Going to do it. In fact, go right, go right, go right. Ball, Washington. Amin. 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 Come on. Third win of the season. All coming away. And the Tractor Boys bust out of poor form. And it's been a bright spark to an otherwise tough season. Amin Adley with the dagger. Ipswich Town with a huge three points in the capital. Honestly, for as bad as we have been to start this season off, I mean, Adley has been fantastic. And you know, when I said uh, we were signing a player like him, it's not just the goals I wanted, but the assists as well. And to be fair, as Nicholas is now up to 62 overall for those curious, he, he has contributed. Maybe only the one assist, but six goals in eight as well. That's seven direct contributions to goals in almost as many games. He's up to 84 overall. He's still getting better at 27. What a signing he's been. Big, big gamble. £40 million club record fee. 75 grand a week. Most expensive contract in the team. Worth every penny, man. Liam who? It's Amin right now who's picking up the slack. Right, following game, Carabao Cup, uh, last 16, taking on Marco Silva's Fulham at home. Only made it through by taking out Oxford United on penalties, not feeling confident here, because once again we'll field a backup side for it, with this being our fourth and lowest priority. Fulham in the League Cup, but come on, it's which town anyway. Let's make the quarters for the first time in the save. Imagine if we make the cause with back-to-back -back penalty shootouts as Flynn downs and have a go. Oh, it hits the crossbar and Fulham will get it away. Still in the middle, but that's, that's definitely looking like a like, likely possibility right now. Just can't get it past Fulham and get those chances. Corner, whipped in, Bay gets up, heads it away. And with 11 to go, it looks as though we are indeed set for another penalty shootout. Second in a row in the League Cup to see when we go through. Or our progress says That's a great ball by Amari though. Now, Mumba and Clark with two. I should not mess this up, really. Guess what I've just done. Uh, Mumba, no. No, instead he says, I want it all the way. I want it all the way. Mumba going all the way. Straight to keeper. 
and can turn the rebound in all the way. Just messed up the finish. Dizel. Hutchinson shot blocked and that is going to do it. Penalty shootout. Second straight round. We go to the spot kicks. Are we making it through once again? Or would our luck run out of the second attempt? Alright, here we go. It's rare enough for Doxy Boy to win one penalty shootout. Can he win two in a row? Let's find out. Jack Clark to take the first one. Sends the keeper the wrong way. And we have the lead from the spot kicks. We've got to get some saves. And that's what I'm quite bad at. Harry Wilson does score. And that's, that's one thing I find so difficult about penalty shootouts and penalties in general. It's like if you dive the right way, like I would say half the time you don't get anything on it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should always get something on it when you do go the right way, but... I, I think you should get, you know, a little bit of help from the game, considering how hard it is. Twice in a row that's been the case, and we still remain 100% through four until that moment there. Because that's the thing, the AI, if they go the right way, they'll make the save. But if you do, again, I say half the time, I think it's more like a quarter of the time. 25%, so not only have you got to guess the right way, you also need a, a bit of helping hand from the game as well. And it doesn't give you much on ultimate that's what makes saving penalty so difficult but there is one there poor penalty and mumba has the chance to get oh no 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 had the chance to give us the lead and i've blazed it in to row z sander to give fulham progress to the quarters which he doesn't carl makes the save two in a row and it continues sudden death flynn with the goal and how about that? Carl Hine, penalty saving king. Luongo, our former player, must score and does. Ducore, who I'm a big, big fan of, man, needs to score. Does, once again. Shoe on the other foot. Keep it going the right way, but getting nothing on it. Gomez for the following one. Needs to score in sudden death. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Really thought Carl had that one there as the shootout continues. He's going to go to the keepers at this point because Ben Johnson has also scored. And still, the sudden death continues. Carl, can you make the save here and send us into the quarters? No, right down the middle. Luke Wolfenden, I've got to say, I'm not feeling confident. I'm not feeling confident from the captain out there tonight. Big Luke Wolfender, no born in Ipswich, and wants to lead them to the quarters himself. And now Issa Diop must score. Sudden death continuing. Who is going to blink first? It is Issa Diop. And once again, <laughs> as Jake O'Brien takes the next. Big Jake O'Brien. Come on, son. Big penalty. Saved, and that might do it. If Araujo scores, that will do. One of the longest shootouts I've had in a long time is over. Fulham are through. And how many penalties did I go the right way for there and not save? I really wish I was counting, but it must have been about five. That's incredible when you think about it. But Fulham are through to the quarterfinals. Doxy and penalty shootouts. We might have won one, but we were never going to win two in a row. Yeah, I think that was five times, I guess, the right way, and yet still didn't get gloves on the shots. It's so difficult, but what do I say, man? Got to take accountability. Simply put, should have scored that one with Jake O'Brien. Right, uh, following game, let's bounce back here in the league and make it back-to-back -back wins in the league for the first time this season. Struggling Brighton in East Anglia, where we haven't won in the league so far this season, but three points will put us in a European Sport as we aim to kickstart our season after stumbling out of the blocks. Our following game, Brian at home. Come on, it's which town. This wet, soaking turf is so hard to play on. And don't get me wrong, I really like this from EA. I must say, you you, you get to choose like how much of an impact the uh, the conditions have um, on the uh, on the gameplay. And I think that's class from EA. You know, I, I've always said that it's like. When, when they add in a new feature, it's like, I, th I think a lot of people people are worried that maybe some will like it, maybe some won't. Then why don't you give us the option to turn it on or off? Do you know what I mean? Like, if people are worried about a new feature not going down well, give us the option to turn it on and off. Conditions, if, if we want to, we could turn this off. So it would, it would be wet, it would be soaking, it would be windy like it is out there. But it wouldn't have an impact on the gameplay. It would, it would play the exact same as if it was just, you know, sunny. You know, absolutely sunny. But... Like I said, if you give us the option, it negates that fear of, oh, are people going to like this or not, you know? But this is, like I said, that should have been an easy goal. And it would have been 
had we not been playing in this kind of rain-soaked, windy uh, condition out there. But if you give us the option, it like I said, it it's a person's own choice that way. As Washington finds Coley Osho, who shoots and is pounced on. Yeah, when conditions are like this, there's not a great deal you can do. That was so tough. And the fans don't like it. Turning up to this freezing cold afternoon at Portman Road in gale force winds getting drenched. But guys, if you think it's hard to watch, it's hard to play in as well. That was incredibly tough. But I'm loving this though. The, the conditions play such a huge part on the gameplay now. It's so much more realistic. Yeah, it really has been one of my... Um... Okay, cool. Liam's coming back. It really has been one of my uh, one of my biggest gripes over the years with FC. Like, you know, you could be playing in again a uh, sun bast Madrid in April, uh, or you could be playing in you know freezing cold Glasgow in December, and the games would just feel like the same. You know, there really wasn't much difference between the two. But now. It's so much better, so much better. As you might have just seen there, where was it? I just saw it. Vinny's just won. There we are. Vinny has just won at the Ballon d'Or. You love, love to see it. Great guy. So uh, three more scouting updates, and let's see what we got. Or well, I think from now on, I'm just going to show you the players that I'm going to continue the scouting on. And as these four here, Riley Stokes, I must say, could be very good indeed. But we'll do one more month on him and see how he looks. Uh, from the Philippines, we'll continue the scouting on these three players here. And from Gabon, unfortunately, it's been a tough, tough start as we continue to search for the next Pierre Emmerich or Bamiang. Right then, here we go. Following game, Leon in the Champions League away in France. Man, it has been a tough start to the season, but mainly in Europe where we have really struggled. One point taken from a possible nine, two defeats, and not a single win on the board so far. Qualification already looking like it might well be beyond us, and it definitely will be if we lose this game. We need a special performance in France if we are to keep our chances of qualifying for from the league phase alive. Our first European game today and our fourth so far in the league phase. Come on, it's which town. Yeah, certainly not over yet. I mean, three games in. You've got to remember it's eight games in the league phase, so not, not the traditional six in the groups. Uh, so it's it's not it's not done. If we get a couple of wins on the board and that propels us up the table due to just how many teams are in the league phase. 36 mental. Uh, but the, the most okay, the most important thing is getting that win. You know, it might sound like it's still a long way to go, but we've got to get the win first. As oh, Liam Delap almost has a perfect return. Eight minutes in, the German new bell with the save, still no nil. But this is what we got to do, man. Play with intent. Yeah, I don't think a draw is really going to do us much good at this point. We got it. We got to get some wins on the board, you know. As Marchine makes a little camera save there, we need a, a victory, our first in Europe. And I, I do believe it's going to come. I, I, I don't think we're going to go eight games without a win. I do think we'll get a win, but we've got some incredibly tough fixtures to come. Our final two are Barcelona and Leipzig, so we, we could really do with one around this stage. Here we go. Oh, that was a mean. Puts it just wide. Come on. Second half is underway. Still dead off to nil nil. To be fair, though, I think we've been a better team out there as Francisco Trintal looks for space, rolls it in. If Leon go in front here, I'll be fuming. I mean, I've, I've not had a problem all game long. And then the one chance they get, they take. We're just. I'm not going to say we've been unlucky considering the start in Europe, but it feels like it. You know, Valencia, we should have won. Tonight, we've been the better team. And we're a goal down. We're just, it's just... It's one of those, man. It's one of those. you just got to say it is what it is. Literally not a problem all game until there is one. Oh, come on. Welcome back, Mr. The Lap. First since the injury, it was switched with the leveller. Trincao trying to get away from Ben Johnson. Footwork, fantastic, as he rolls it through. I, d I don't know. I don't know. Just, 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 can we end the Champions League now? It's our debut year in it, and four games in. 
we'll have one point. Just end it. Like, we're, we're clearly not cut out for this level yet, man. Seriously. And this is the worst thing. Again, in a couple of these games, I've played fine. Granted, the Milan game. And obviously, the first one against Club Bruges in Belgium. Granted, terrible. But this game here and the one at the Mestia, I've been fine. Just... Chalk it up, man. It's an L. And that is how I'd sum up our debut year in the Champions League. An L. FC24 was the most difficult version of the franchise I'd ever played. And FC25 is even harder. Who's looking forward to FC26? My goodness. Fair play to Eno, man. Ultimate should feel like it. And it definitely does in FC nowadays. Right, following game, Liverpool away. And speaking of ultimate difficulty, this is a tough place to come. Anfield taking on the Reds, who right now have the best defensive record in the division, sat in the top four. For us, only three wins in our first 10 games, but all three have come away from home. We've been better on the road than we have been in East Anglia. Let's continue to prove that with a big three points away against Arnie Slotside. Come on, it's wish town. This has been such a tough tough start to the season honestly but what's been the mantra of today's episode ah take accountability you know have we been on the receiving end of a bit of bad luck oh absolutely should we have won a couple of those european games we ended up either losing or drawing for sure but it's our responsibility to do better james garner denied by mama Villi, and it's going to be a shot from range from Cody Osho and the giant Georgian who I swear every time I face against turns into prime David Seaman. I literally cannot beat him. Great double save as it remains goalless for now. Oh, before anyone says, David Seaman, Doxy boy, your national team bias is showing. Listen, David Seaman on his day was a. Uh... Oh, ball! Yes! A hard man to beat, as is Mamad Ashvili. But if anyone's going to beat him, it's our top score of his seven for the season. I mean, with the opener. Yep, never mind his clangor against Naeem in the Cup Winners' Cup. Oh, there's a, there's a uh, throwback. Never mind his uh, howler against Ronaldinho in the World Cup. That goal is ingrained into my mind, honestly. Um, believe me, he, he was a heck of a goalkeeper, and Arsenal fans will tell you that. And as Christiansen goes down, God, it really is one of those things, isn't it? Like Even, even when we finally get something good, something bad has to follow instantly. Christiansen has been sublime since we signed him. Washington! Come on! Doubles the lead! And the Tractor Boys away days continue to pay off. What do we say? Yeah, we've had some bad luck. There's a moment now of Christensen going down. But take accountability. Ipswich are doing that today. We're turning it up at Anfield. Alright, let's just calm ourselves down because it's the second half, alright? There's still a lot of football to be played and this is Anfield. So let's keep it calm, but what, what a win this will be if we can hang on to it. I've got to be honest, I'm a bit nervous to go forward now, because I don't want to give the ball away and watch Liverpool come forward and the counter with the pace they've got. So I think for the second half, it's going to be a lot of this. A lot of this, just retaining possession and being a little bit spooked, not wanting to go forward. But what, what a win it will be if we can hold on, man. Seriously, it's been such a tough start to the season, but... When you think about it, wins at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, wins at a London Stadium, wins at Old Trafford now here at Anfield as well. David's been given lots of space to shoot off the crossbar. Certainly can't take a, take a bad look at our away form. We, we've been decent on the road. Yet yeah, part of developing a strong character is the ability to take ownership and accountability and responsibility knowing that not everything is going to be your fault, but it is on you to put it right. And Ipswich have put it right. What a win and what a response. No wins in our last three. Disappointing late loss away in Lee. And how do we respond? Will we go to Anfield, Liverpool in the top four, and play them off the park with a 2-0 victory? That was class. How bad was the injury for uh, Christensen as well? Fingers crossed it was just a bruise. No, it was a free month. But hey, listen, like we just said a moment ago there, practice what you preach. 
It's not my fault that Christensen's gone down. That's really unlucky, but take accountability. He's been one of our unsung heroes since we signed him from the Fox at the start of Season 2, but now done until around mid-February. That's a, that's a big, big blow, that. A massive win at Anfield, and now looking for consecutive wins in the league for the first time all season long, but it won't be easy following contests back in East Anglia, where we haven't won all season long in the league so far, taking on the league leaders and still unbeaten Arsenal in pole position. Incredibly tough game to get our first win at Portman Road in this season, but let's see if we can go do it. Come on, it's switch time. Come on, it's switch. Come on. Back to back wins. Is it so hard? We can do this. I mean, you wouldn't have thought they'd be coming here against Liverpool and Arsenal, but we can do this. It's amazing how it's flipped this season. You know, like seriously, going from Portman Road being an absolute fortress the past two years. And the Tractor Boys barely getting a win on the road. So this year, all of our wins coming away. <laughs> and we still haven't got a dub in East Anglia. It's crazy how it's totally flipped on its head. But I've said this before, for me, I can only ever do one. You know, I can't do both at a time. I'm either great at defending or I'm great at scoring. I can't do both. And it's the same with my form as Saka. It's the woodwork. Home and away. I can, I can only be good in one. Home or away. Got to choose at the start of the season. As Mudrick does really well there, but I think Ali's off and he is. Allison, the yeah, ex-Liverpool goalkeeper, now at the Emirates. Kicks it long, only for Ben Johnson to win it back. And as we still find ourselves deadlocked here. De decent, decent start from Arsenal. Already hitting the woodwork early. But... Oh, I should have played my man through. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Ipswich... Despite the troubles at home, knowing it's on us to put it right. Take accountability. Morgan's delivery. Adley's header. Great save by Allison and claims to rebound too. Good gap, Poe. Through the gaps. A great through ball. Saka's going to play advantage. He's running through. He's one on one. He's rolled it across. It's Dominic with the opener. And you don't often see the AI cut it back. But for that moment there, Bakayo had the intelligence. Grease goes into the booking for a late challenge, flying out Arsenal in front, and a Portman Road curse is set to continue. We can go away and beat anyone. At home, we cannot get that first win. So in the week, oh dear, we've got the most winnable European game there is, a home to Helsinki. As this game is done and Martinelli wraps it up. And if we don't win that, then I think automatically we are guaranteed to be knocked out of the Champions League in the league phase. But because it's at home, I'm not even feeling confident for it. It, is, it has just been a curse this year, Portman Road. It's amazing how it's totally flipped on its head. We've gone from being unbeatable at home to getting beaten every game. It's incredible. Yeah, perhaps some things just aren't meant to be. Frank Lampard being a top-level manager, Ipswich Town playing Champions League football. Perhaps this just isn't a step we're able to take. But heading into this game, I think we'll know whether that's the case or not if we fail to win or finally get our first. Because it's the bottom two of 36 teams in the Champions League going head-to-head. -head. HJK Helsinki coming to Portman Road. If we can't win this, then A, we've got no chance of qualifying. And B, we've got no business being in the Champions League. The easiest game we could have... At home, surely our first Champions League win is coming here. And our first win at home all season long. Come on, it's Witch Town. Yeah, with all due respect to the Finnish side, I mean, if we can't beat them... Oh, Adley's through. Adley's through. And it's denied as well. Then, I mean, we've got no business being here. Do you know what I mean? If we can't beat this team, we've got no business even being in the Champions League. Amin has his header off the line as well. It's a, it's a great start from the Tractor Boys, but what's missing is what's often missing, that goal. As Mumba will win it back and slide it through. Just keep your foot on the gas pedal, though. Keep your foot on the gas pedal. Well, you made that bright start. Just keep going. Oh, come on. Hutchinson to Flynn. Adley. Madrid, yes! Come on! Keeps it off the post, and Mikhailo gives us the opener. Well, I don't think it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. I, I, you know, win this game or not. I mean, we've got Barcelona and Leipzig, our final two Champions League games. I don't think there's any chance of us qualifying. But just, you know, psychologically, finally getting that first win. Finally getting our first victory at Portman Road all season long. And our first Champions League win as well. If nothing else, like I said, psychologically... 
It means something. Yes! And it's Flynn, one of the homegrown lads who doubles up. 2 0 Ipswich, finally some joy in East Anglia. Well, I highly doubt this is going to be the start of the most epic comeback qualification story you have ever seen. But what it is, is a win. Ipswich Town have finally overcome that psychological hurdle with their first win at Portman Road this season, if you don't count that penalty shootout win over Oxford in the League Cup, and for sure their first Champions League win. You see what it means? The fist bump on the sidelines. In the grand scheme of things, we're surely still going out, but at least we can celebrate something. Let's do one more and end on that. Yep, our final game today, the final game of November, Burnley away at Turf Moor, where all four of our Premier League wins have come so far. So let's get our fifth here that could send us into eighth place, leapfrogging Unai Emery's Aston Villa team. Let's end on a strong, positive note, which will be three wins in four and back-to-back -back wins for the first time all season long. Come on, it's Witch Town. The season kickstarts now. Sorry for missing the uh, full match intro as well there. Sometimes you hold down the square button and it doesn't register that you're holding down the square button. So, yeah, my apologies anyway, but um, still. Big win here, please. And it's which we start to feel maybe, just maybe, after a very slow, sluggish start, the tide is beginning to, uh, to turn. There's only one way we can do that, though. It's by taking accountability and being better. Coley Osho back at his old stomping ground. Rolls it back to James Garner, who miscontrols. Wins it back. Adley dinks it. Washington's through. It was, oh, Ipswich should have been in front. How on earth has the president put that wide? What a miss. It's just been that kind of season for David Washington, really. Like, he's just not able to, to get it sorted yet. But the one thing I respect, and I've always respected this, is like even if you're not performing, even if you're not doing well, don't shy away from the ball. Keep asking for it. Keep looking for it. Keep trying to find it. Keep asking your teammates to get it to you. You know, it's like you got you got to shoot through the slump. You know, you got you got to shoot through the slump. And at the moment, that's what I'm saying to David. Shoot through it, son. Shoot through it. You, you're struggling right now. But even the best, even Steph Curry has off nights, man. Shoot through the slump. For me, the mindset of a great striker needs to be one of, I will score the next. Even if I've missed my last five attempts on goal, I will score the sixth. You know, you've just got to keep backing yourself, you know, to put that ball in the back of the net and the next opportunity. Even if, oh, great save by Borka. And again, you've missed a few consecutive ones. Marchine, he's, he's had a struggle in the start of the season too, alongside Washington. As things stand, not really filling the gloves of Murich yet, but that's a great double save. And he keeps us still leading by one go for what would be his third clean sheet in four. I can't put this start to the season on just one or two players. No, as a team collectively, we just haven't done well. It's only really one man that's been picking up the slack out there. And that's our new club record signing of me and Adley. But we've all got to do better. Simple as that. We've all got to do better. Mudrick, who's been decent himself, if he heads away. Someone goes down. That's Coley Osho. He's playing everyone on side. This is dangerous. Mike Trezor dribbling, tackled, corner. I'm penned right now. It had been an incredibly tough start to the season where we've been on the end of some real misfortune. But as we discussed during the episode, the mantra was got to take accountability and got to do better. And it's which town have definitely done that. Three wins in our last four games. Three clean sheets in our last four games. Our first win at Portman Road, our first win in the Champions League, and back to back wins for the first time all season long. I don't want to jinx it, but after a sluggish start, it's which town have finally kick started their season, it appears. But that'll do it for today's episode of Korea World, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. If you had, then please do drop a like. Much of you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode with more big games in the Premier League, getting through to the halfway stage. Hopefully, going to get ourselves into a European spot for the first time this season. We're going to have our first East Anglian dog away against Norwich at Carrow Road. Can't wait for that. And we'll have Athletic Madrid in the Champions League away where really we need to win all three of our final games, I'd say, to at least even make the playoffs. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.